Alrighty guys, what is going on? So I'm here with the second video of the channel. Now, you guys requested this to be the first video. Um, when I did the poll, it was 63% of you guys said yes. And, well, I apologize. I kind of went against what I said I was going to do. But the reason for that was because I wanted to make the first video personal. So you guys understand where I'm coming from in the future. And uh, so that's that. So you guys know what this is about. This is a sneaker collection video, so let's get straight into this. Now, first things first, um, I'm going to try to do these in order of chronological, so from most recent to least recent purchase. I'm going to try, but without further ado, let's get into this. Now, the most recent purchase is not a shoe that I'm new to by any means, and that's the Air Force One Low Top. Um, this is probably one of the most iconic sneakers out other than maybe a Stan Smith or the equivalent from Puma which I'm not sure what that is um you know or Reebok Reebok's another brand that I actually have only gotten one shoe from which I ended up donating like a few months after because I wasn't really crazy about it so it's one of these kind of things that I love the shoe I gotta point something out any of us who are spending the money on the Air Force One, the quality, as you can imagine, over the years has not gotten that much better. And if anything, I'm kind of feeling like the leather on these, may, maybe because I'm coming from higher end, like higher quality sneakers like Jordans, uh, like my Jordan ones. But even at that, I kind of feel like the leather on these is a little bit cheapy. Um, and again, I, I I could just have really really high expectations for a shoe. That's fairly low priced at 120 Canadian. At least that's what I paid for it at Foot Locker. So, yeah, take that as you will. But um, that is in sec. Uh, sorry, that's the first most recent purchase. Before these, I'm trying to remember what I bought, which I don't. Um, that's literally how long it was since I bought a pair of shoes. I'm going to have to say it would have been my spizzit. No, 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 I lied. The Air Force ones were not my most recent purchase. The Hirachis were. My apologies. Um, I actually recently got these from Valley Village. And these, I think, were like 12 bucks or th less, like, let's say 15 because I don't remember. Um, one thing I didn't notice was the heel tab was cut on the back of one of the shoes, which is in this case the right one. Um, not sure exactly why, but just because of that, I'm thinking of cutting off this rubber portion here anyway. Um, I, I really don't see it providing me any stability at all, and I kind of feel like it just, it looks nice if it would have been the fabric, like this kind of suede material that they use on the toe bump, um, sorry, on the toe box area, like that kind of material, and it's not, so I'm thinking of just removing it somehow. Um, I've gotten to wear these quite a few times in the last week that I've had them. And I'm in love with these. These are extremely comfortable, which I wasn't coming. I wasn't expecting it because they're Hirachis, and not to like bash them as a model or whatever, but they're not really high end on Nike's well spectrum. So, for instance, something like my Air Maxes, I do feel these are not as comfortable as the Hirachis. Now, not as mainly because Hirachis are using a foam. Whereas these are using multiple different compounds such as air as well as a rubber. So there's that. Now these guys I really, really do get to say are very comfortable. I want to get a couple different colorways in these. So stay tuned. Any new shoes that I pick up, I will update you guys on Instagram. So there's that. Um, but as I was saying, before the Air Force Ones, I believe my Spizikes, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure these were... Now these guys I paid I think like 25 bucks after tax. Canadian, keep in mind I'm in Canada, these are all Canadian prices and these are all from Valley Village for the most part. Um, I'm kind of lying to some like you know friends and saying that I can get them like winners or I've had them for so long you know. A little bit embarrassing but nonetheless um, it is what it is. Very comfortable. Not as comfortable as let's say for instance other Jordans that may feature like this kind of like midsole technology with the air unit but I kind of feel like that's just stemming down to I had to take the insole out of this one 
and the reason is just because it was a little bit too much pressure on my instep and again I like the Spizike in terms of it does take features from other Jordans that are like flagship models and throw them into well this one you know what I'm saying so this is kind of like a Jordan like a baby Jordan 6 and all that and that's pretty cool um again I believe I paid these like 25 bucks and these are the Oreo Spizikes for those of you guys who are curious um the colorway on the Karachis I think it's a gym red and black I'm not 100% sure on that one. I apologize. Move you guys a little bit closer. So the next is, I believe, the Pure Boost, which I got, oh God, a few months ago. If you guys don't follow my main channel, link will be down below uh, in the description. It's going to be on my most recent Valley Village haul. And um, I don't know how much I paid for these. I believe I mentioned in that video if you guys are curious about that. But uh, these are the Pure Boost LTD, which is why they have a more rugged, robust outsole design. Which, in my opinion, at first I thought was going to be something I actually really felt the difference in. In the outsole, in terms of traction, yeah. Like coming from Flintstones to the Ultra Boost, which is... This is basically, normally, not what this is like in terms of the tread design. Uh, thickness, I should say. It's usually something fairly similar to what you would get with the Ultra Boost in terms of how much depth there is in the in the uh, outsole tread. <clears throat> but this is a great shoe if you're like you know in the city, if you're doing a lot of walking, whatever, um, or if you're into running. Now, I don't know know how these are in terms of performance. I don't run. I do interval training, so I don't really know you know where these stand in terms of if they're good or not. In my opinion. I like that they do have art support. It's not art support like you really want um, from like an insole kind of thing, from that perspective, but it is nice that it's lifted a little bit as opposed to a lot of insoles are flat. These do not come with insoles, which is something that I thought was actually kind of odd, but very much like I mentioned with a lot of all these shoes, most of them, if not all of them, I would have to take the insole out anyway, so like my Ultra Boost, I don't have the insole in these either, so I'm used to that feeling of having a little bit of extra cushion of the boost because you you know removed the insole um i've gone ahead and really really started to like these these are definitely my rotation for the week um not the most uncomfortable or comfortable shoe for those of you guys who are wondering is this going to be a shoe that's going to be very comfortable in comparison to the ultra boost because there's more boost i wouldn't really say there's more boost I would probably say this is just a wider uh, design in the sense it's not like there's going to be like a lot more boost so it is going to cover a little more on the forefoot which is something I like I have a wider foot which is why so there's that one downfall is the burrito style tongue I don't like this uh, Adidas had said I believe from I'm mistaken it was due to give the runner a more personalized lockdown feel I, I personally just don't agree with that Plus, I'm using stretch laces just because I want it to be a slip-on. And then I have to constantly readjust the tongue. I really don't like that. So there's that. Um, if I'm trying, to, okay, I'm, I'm trying to remember here, and I apologize. I don't get sneakers very often. But I would have to say the next pair of shoes that I got. Um, I believe they're my Yeezys, if I'm not mistaken. These guys I got in, I think, March. How long have I had these for? I picked these up uh, at Valley Village. And, you know, I'm telling some people I got them off of Flight Club just because nobody's going to believe you when you tell them you get it at Valley Village. These are from Valley Village. I paid these 50 bucks. From all the testing that I've gotten done with these shoes to authenticate them, they've all come back as authentic. Um, even if they aren't, to be completely honest, I really don't care. Um, it's not like I'm spending, like, you know, the money on a pair of shoes and then they get faked out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it's right to buy fakes. I don't condone that, but you, you, you do you. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so as of right now, I would have to say these are authentic, mainly... The one big giveaway is the midsole that is not very translucent. It's translucent, but it's 
almost not in the sense it's very ghosted if that makes any sense whatsoever <clears throat> and um very comfortable shoe nonetheless it's something i get a lot of compliments on um one of the one issue that i have with these is this bit here this rubber um midsole uh in case whatever you want to call it um i really not a fan of it because it really in my opinion at least and i'm wearing these for instance like a whole day at the mall or something you know it's going to be something that you feel uh it just kind of takes away from the experience of the boost technology that these are notorious for they're not uncomfortable it's just that's something you're going to feel as well as like i mentioned it's a bit of an arch slope there. I really don't like that because I have a fairly broad, wide foot. And even though it's not so much in the sides and the middle, it's it's something that I do feel. And over time, walking with these shoes is something you got to kind of get used to. So that's something to take note of. But in terms of the boost, out of 10, I'd give these probably about an 8 or a 7 out of 10 in terms of cushion and comfort. Overall quality, I would have to say these are great. So... If you can get these kind of like Yeezys, the 350s uh, at a good deal, go for it. Uh, let me do one of these. Next up, I'm trying to remember. I apologize, I don't remember a lot of these shoes. Um, I believe I got, I remember when I got my Ultra Boost, I got the Air Maxes, so if I'm not mistaken, those that have been the purchase I made before the Yeezys. So, the Air Max and the Ultra Boost, two very comfortable shoes. Obviously, the Ultra Boost, I would say, is more comfortable if you guys are doing a lot of walking. Very much like the Pure Boost, like these guys. Very, very comfortable shoe. These guys are actually really good. I haven't really tried running in these, but I have jogged a little bit. A um, bit of treadmill work here and there. And I think these are pretty comfortable. I wouldn't really recommend them for doing long durations. Just maybe because I'm overweight and I'm heavier set. You know, it's something that I feel is a little bit uncomfortable. Because I do start to feel the, um, I don't know what you call, those little studs there that are, that are inside the air bubble. You kind of start to feel those as they start to compress over time. If you're jogging or if you're running, I can imagine it's even more so. Keep that in mind. This is something that not a lot of people like as a shoe in general in terms of the running community. I don't consider myself to be part of the running community, so yeah. But in terms of the Ultra Boost, nobody's really complained about this. Only complaint that I have with this, the Prime Knit, honestly, for the 250 price tag, it's okay. It really is. I kind of feel like the Prime Knit on the Yeezys is just... Just a snid bit better, a little bit, and considering they're fairly close in price, if I had to recommend them one of the two, I'd probably just go with these, but don't pay retail. Go on Flight Club, go on StockX, go Stadium Goods, wherever, and get them cheaper. I'm currently doing that with the uh, Ultra Boost 19s, so it does work. Before these, I got these guys, I think it was, and I don't actually, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, I could have gotten these afterwards, again, I apologize, I don't remember. Um, these are the Saucony Triumph Run, or no, Saucony Triumph ISO Run 3, I think it is. Very comfortable shoe, I would have to say these are just as comfortable as the Ultra Boost, in my opinion. Now, that may change depending on person to person. Another thing that they may change is I have the Timberland Pro anti-fatigue insole with these guys and extremely, extremely comfortable insole. I've done a review on these on my main YouTube channel, My Life in the Six. Again, link down below. And these shoes have yet to fail me in terms of comfort and cushion. Um, another shoe that's great if you're doing a lot of walking. Um, I got these again at Valley Village. I don't know how much I paid for these. And... Just overall great quality shoe, very comfortable, and that's that's pretty much that. It's got like a kind of like a fused material in the front toe area. Um, I guess this is okay if you're doing a bit of like a trail running or kind of whatever, but it is more of a neutral shoe from what I've done research on. 
Um, not a lot of people really tend to hate the shoe, which is good. So that's that. Um, then there's these polos, which I really don't wear that often, sadly. I, I love the look of the shoe still. Um, I don't know why I don't wear it. I, I just never really find an outfit to really put these with, which really sucks. I'm going to start doing that while I still can. It's starting to get colder out, so there's that. But uh, these I paid, I think, like 25 bucks, And their polo, I'm not a huge fan of Ralph Lauren. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. Not a I don't dislike the brand. I just am not a huge fan of them. Uh, of of uh, Ralph Lauren Polo as a designer of shoes. I'm not crazy about them. I like these because it's very basic, very minimal. I had something very similar to these from US Polo, which is I kind of feel like why I, get, I, I cater to these. As well as it's got that nice like tan brown tongue, uh, sorry, um, collar on the inside, as well as the matching brown on the back tab. And... Or not time, it's a stripe of leather. Outsole is, again, classic polo sneaker outsole. Um, what else? There's those. And then the, one of the oldest shoes that I still have, all the way back in high school, is, actually, no. I got these before. These are another pair of shoes they got from Valley Village. Extremely comfortable shoe. Um, really, really like these. These are the Air Jordan 1 Hall of Fames. These are a size 13. I normally wear a size 12. I really think the biggest I can go in a Jordan 1 is probably 12 and a half at most. If they come in that size, which I don't know. I believe they do. And I wore these to death in high school. I love these shoes. I used to rock the tongue like that. Don't know why. I just that's That's what I did. I'm definitely thinking of selling these. I just don't know exactly how much they're going to go for because the used market, there aren't very many of these out there. So I'm not really sure exactly how to price these. But nonetheless, a very solid colorway. In my opinion, Very, it's out there, but it's minimal at the same time because the only out there part is the numbers. I don't remember what they signify. Uh, what they signify. It is about the uh, university red hits to it. Uh, and obviously, the golden Jordan logo. Can't forget that. Last on this list, and probably one of the other very comfortable shoes. Um, fairly comparable to Boost, but as I would imagine what the new version of Boost, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I think it's called Boost Plus. I can imagine that's exactly what this feels like, because it's very soft and bouncy and squishy, but it's also got a more firm cushion to it which is nice and is actually the reason why I still have these um, I used to also have the hybrid on 2010s and I don't know what happened to those but I prefer those over these but these are very comfortable as well both are very comfortable so these are the 2010 I think it is model these are the last model in production Under Armour no longer makes these these are the Micro G Funk in the all black colorway um, if you guys don't know, my favorite color is green, so I colored these in the Under Armour logo there, and then the Micro G branding on the forefoot there in green. Um, at one point, I even had green laces, but I took those off because it was a little bit too much green for me. Anyways, guys, that is it for this uh, collection. Like I mentioned, I will update you guys when I get new shoes on Instagram. Links down below. But um, until next time, that's pretty much it for tonight. If you guys have any recommended uh, topics for future videos, Shoot them on Instagram and in the DMs and let me know. Until next time, stay alive in six. I'm out.